Hey there, this is San Salvador, the capital of the little Central American country of El Salvador. A nice, uh, hot day here in the middle of winter. Today is March 7th, 2020. first time here, first uh, full day in the country. That Uber ride was $3.40. El Salvador is quite affordable, not dirt cheap. My room there was uh, a little expensive for what you're getting. I've had the same sort of room in Mexico for like 20 bucks. That was like 10 years ago, so maybe 30 bucks now, but if you're like, you know, in the uh, more local area away from the tourist zone, of course, in Mexico you can easily pay 50 bucks, 60 bucks, whatever, and much more for hotel rooms. But uh, for being kind of outside the center and just an okay room, a little expensive there, but. Uh, most of the uh, things around the country seem to be very reasonably priced. Food is cheap. Uber rides are cheap. Okay, so Organización de Estados Centroamericanos. So this is something that I wanted to talk about. A bit of the history of El Salvador. 15th September 1821. A la Gloria del Benemerito, General Francisco Morazan, La República de El Salvador. So this is Morazan Square, so 1880. So the uh, history of El Salvador is kind of back and forth between various empires. Of course, it was part of the Spanish Empire, founded in the 16th century. It then became part of the Mexican Empire, and then the Central American Union of Nations, and then I think went back to the Mexican Empire, or it was independent, I think it was independent, and then went back to another Central American Union of Nations that was different from the previous one, and then finally it got its real independence in 1898. The main language is, of course, Spanish. The currency is the U.S. dollar. And they have a... not exactly new president, but... Nayib Bukele, who has been in office for five years and I guess has really transformed the country and which people seem to be very happy with. The Uber driver there was really nice and uh, said that he was happy with uh, the president. However, on Wikipedia, then it states that he was kind of removed from being president, but not actually removed from office, something like that. So I'm not sure exactly what the deal is with the uh, president's current status, but uh, Anyways, it is a country going through changes. So, we're in the uh, historical center here. Got some interesting street artists. Okay, here's an opportunity to show you one of the interesting coins here. As I mentioned, then they use the U.S. dollar. Okay, I'm going to uh, stop the camera for a second, get a coin out. So as I mentioned in my last video, then I went to a convenience store last night and bought some stuff and then got three of these $1 coins in change. There is the Statue of Liberty. It is a for real one U.S. dollar coin with John Adams on the back 
but I have never seen it before. I've seen other $1 coins, the Sacagawea coin, and I think some other ones. So, I'm really curious if I were to go to like 7-Eleven in the U.S. and try to pay for something with these, would they take it or would they be like, what's this? This isn't real. Because I've never seen this in my life. What year does it have a year on it? it I mean, it should. They always do. But, uh, man, it's like really small. Oh, no, this one doesn't have John Adams. It has Martin Van Buren. Okay, so it's like a series with uh, different uh, presidents who I guess like didn't make other coins or notes or whatever. But I cannot see a year on there. Anyways, here we go. Muchas gracias. All right, we got confirmation that she was a real human being since she moved there. And so uh, the plan is just to uh, like walk around the central area, show what's going on, show the uh, plazas, some churches, give a little taste of this uh, kind of little known country that is Opening up a bit more to tourism. You see a lot of police around. Okay, here we have... Maybe this is Libertad Square. There's a series of plazas right in this uh, area. Look at this. Must be the uh, main cathedral. Here we go. El Salvador del Mundo. It's open. That's great because... Online, I thought it said it was closed from 1 to 4. Could have been another church or it was just wrong. But it uh, looks like we can go inside, so that is awesome. It is massive. Let's uh, take the sunglasses off. What are the rules? Don't use cell phones. Don't scream. Appropriate attire. No food, but, uh, oh. Okay. No pictures during Holy Mass, so otherwise it's okay, I guess. So it is hot. I already got my uh, pants rolled up. Should have brought the shorts. It is 88 degrees Fahrenheit. That is 31 degrees Celsius. And 
here's a little better uh, explanation of the different phases of the history of El Salvador. So, Kingdom of Spain, 1525 to 1821. Mexican Empire, 1822 to 1823, so just for a year or two. And then Central America, so a nation essentially, the Central American nation, 1823 to 1841, and then an independent El Salvador, 1841 to 1896, and then back to Central America, 1896 to 1898, and then El Salvador, independent, 1898 to present. Looks like they're getting ready for a performance. That would be great to see, but uh, maybe it's not happening anytime soon. But uh, people standing up there, nobody's sitting yet though. So maybe uh, later in the evening once it cools down, that would make sense. Who have we got here? A la memoria del San Emerito Capitan General Gerardo Barrios, El Pueblo Centro Americano, 1909. This guy is doing a bit of vlogging as well. Okay, it is time for me to uh, Check my recommendations and uh, see where else to go from here. It's bird feeding time. Cool. All right, well, I see where I should go next. Boom, looks like a street market. All right, all right, all right. Definitely interesting. A new country, new city, new culture. Just barely starting to learn about it. Looking forward to the next 10 days or so here in El Salvador. I have my hotel room for another two nights, so tomorrow to explore further, and then I will plan to go to Santa Ana, the second largest city. And I wanted to mention about entering El Salvador as far as visas, requirements. With a U.S. passport, of course, it's different depending on where you're from. If you are from uh, a nearby country, then you won't need to do the uh, step that I had to do when arriving at the airport, which was to pay $12, basically an entry fee into the country, sort of a visa waiver. But uh, I didn't have to get a visa in advance. I also did not need an onward flight. I don't have a flight booked out of the country yet. So it was just super easy, short lines at the airport, going through immigration, cheap flight, $203, one way from San Francisco direct to the only international airport in the country, which is about a 45 minute or so drive away. Uber from there for $34 to my hotel. So things have been quite convenient. I think when I go to Santa Ana, I will once again get a uh, Uber there, skip having to like 
get across the city to the bus station, take a bus to Santa Ana, take another Uber or taxi from there to my hotel, just do a straight shot. Because it is about the same distance as the airport, it's also an hour away. Pelucaria, El Chalito. Let's continue the market tour. Not seeing a lot of gringos around. A few, but it is not a popular tourist destination. I think there will be more foreign tourists over on the Pacific Ocean at the beach scene. What are these? No idea. Looks sort of like olives, but definitely not. Some interesting fruit smells. I'm sure very good prices around here. Let's do a... Uh, around the block thing. Here are the local buses. Cool paint jobs on all of them. Bluebird, all American. Disculpe. Here we go. Different kind of bus. Okay, Plaza del Trovador. So you can sort of see the edge of the city. I mean, you can. It's like not that far away. Houses on the hills there. I wonder if those are the uh, fancy Beverly Hills mansions. Let's uh, continue around the block. So as I mentioned, this is my first time to El Salvador. Country number 94. Other countries in Central America that I've been to include Belize. have to find somewhere to stay. I don't have anything reserved tonight. There's a lot of uh, hostels, I guess. Just gonna walk around, see what I can find. Excuse me. Pardon me. Hi there, excuse me. Guatemala. Costa Rica. I thought this was a piece of wood in the road, and then it moved. Here's a sloth crossing the road. Whoa. Never would have thought. And Panama. Only saw Panama City and the Panama Canal in Panama, but uh, explored more of the other countries. The only two countries in Central America I haven't been to yet are Nicaragua and Honduras, which are very close by. All right, let's uh, get over here, continue the market tour. Beans, beans, beans. 
sewing shirts on the street there. Hammocks. Nice looking hammocks. Some crunchy looking snacks. Potatoes. Man, there's just there's everything for sale around here. And it keeps on going up this way, so uh Let's go for it. Fruits, veggies. This is the real deal. What is this building up ahead? Parking lot, very colorfully painted. Smelling our pupusas there. Mercado Central. Okay, so is that an indoor market? Must be. As for my Spanish speaking, not great, but I can kind of get by with the basics. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once, doce, trece, catorce. Papaya de la grande, dos por uno, veinticinco. Papaya, something cinco. La grande, so big papayas for... Vente cinco. Big papayas for 25, so maybe 25 cents for a big papaya. So there you can see. I know a little Spanish. Not a lot. And it is looking like indeed this is a indoor market. Right on. Let's see how it's different. I'm sure that there will be a pretty epic food scene inside there. Another church it looks like. Maybe that is the one that I'd seen was closed from one to four. We can uh, pop over there later. Let's uh, head on up here.